Hey guys, I'm Maria Sebastian and welcome to my 30 Thursdays of Art series. In today's video, I'll be tackling two of the most frequently asked questions, the inspiration and meaning behind my art. First, the inspiration. I'm an avid reader and books are a constant source of inspiration for me, along with music. However, sometimes all I have to do is just look out of the window. The sky in all its colourful glory, the wispy clouds and the light shining through them are so beautiful. The way fabric drapes, the movement of fishes in the water, the ripples and reflections, the highlights and shadows in an alley and focusing on often ignored things. The sharp lines and planes of buildings, the architectural and historical masterpieces, the way a million shades of green make up a single leaf, the play of light on ordinary things. My past works, I constantly try to strive to outdo my past self. Emphasis on try. <laughs> Sometimes, all we have to do is open ourselves up to the possibilities and be willing to work hard and smart. You'll be surprised at how much effort it actually takes before I put pencil to paper. Inspiration must definitely find you working. I almost always try to have a serious plan of action before starting my work. Now let's go to my studio and start a new painting. Starting is sometimes the hardest thing to do. Yet, it is so worth it if you have a plan and take it seriously. Sometimes. Not always. Have fun. <laughs> ah, I'm not sure what I'm doing right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today, I'll be painting on Prime 300 GSM paper with a wash of green acrylic paint. I try to sketch really lightly. And this right here is my stash of art supplies. They bring me a lot of joy and I love them. I work primarily in oils, but I use acrylics for my underpaintings. The brands I use most often are Winsor & Newton, Sennelier and Liquitex. Here, you can see me start with the underpainting. This stage is done in acrylics because they dry fast and if I do this in oils, it's going to take days to dry in order for me to paint the second layer. This is often the super ugly stage of painting. All I'm doing is mapping out the very basic forms and sometimes values. I don't give this stage too much thought. Now let's move on to my favorite part, the oil painting. I use liquid to speed up the drying process. Since I live in India, this helps in drying each layer in a day, which is a heaven scent. I use ivory black, cadmium red, titanium white and yellow ochre, also known as the Sone palette, in order to do my skin tones. I know only these four colors are enough to do almost all skin tones if you mix it right but I often add other colors in later layers. Now let's get to discussing the meaning behind my art. A lot of people ask me why I only paint women. The truth is that though the staggering majority of my subjects are women, I paint men too. <laughs> a painting is not merely a pretty thing to look at for me. Though it is not anybody's individual fault, the lack of awareness that a lot of people in India have about the history of art and the aesthetics and the indifference towards artistic ambitions is frankly quite discouraging. I'm a self-taught artist, meaning I've never been properly or professionally trained in painting. My earliest memory is of me scribbling on the walls with broken stubs of crayons. I'm, I'm sorry mom. <laughs> Art has always been a part of me. However, the older I get, the more I'm able to analyze my own need to produce art and critically think about my choice of themes, subjects and colors. When I paint a human form, I'm not painting an individual. I'm trying to portray variations of the self. It is true that I often paint the female face to represent the self, but I think that is because I am a woman and I understand the implications of the nuances that this particular body brings to the table. 
It boils down to the fact that I'm very comfortable with female features since I'm so familiar with myself. However, I never paint an individual pretty female. Though of course if that's what you choose to say in my paintings, I'll never correct you. You're not wrong per se. The figures I paint are more uh, of a concrete representation of an abstract idea of the self in my head. For me, it is an attempt to capture the human spirit. I also often have animals, birds or flowers accompanying my portraits. This is a motive for the collective, the collective being everything in the universal consciousness. When I put together the individual and the collective, I'm trying to establish a connection that runs far deeper than the superficiality of the individuality. I think that the concept of individual works only alongside the concept of the collective. So basically, every painting is a reminder that you need everything else in the universe and cannot be dependent on just yourself. It doesn't limit itself to loving animals, nature or other human beings despite differences precisely because the individual collective difference establishes a connection even in difference. It is a lot about one's insignificance and significance in comparison to the collective. I hope I made sense. And this is the point where I have to tie up my hair in a messy bun and use a paintbrush to hold it together. Normal stuff, really. <laughs> the meaning and effect of every painting depends on the viewer and I have no control over that. But when I paint, this is the meaning I always paint with. It is just an overarching theme in my work. You can look at a painting and interpret it in a vastly different way from the way I intended it to be and that is completely alright. That is the beauty of art. It is extremely subjective and what somebody thinks is a masterpiece will be one of the most hated pieces by another. That is good art right there. A lot of people have complimented me on the way I paint eyes. Thank you so much. But I personally feel that I have a lot to improve. The taste gap, meaning what I want to create and the limitations due to my actual skill level frustrates me all the time. But when I add in the last highlights and that fleck of white in the eyes, I remind myself to take a moment and feel good about the work of art that I was able to bring to the world from practically nothing. I think artists hold a special place in the grand scheme of things that way. Though I paint largely realistically, it is nowhere near photorealism and I never want it to be. I don't think that art that looks as real as possible is superior to everything else. Hopefully I'll make a video in the future talking about art styles and how I'm still in the process of finding mine. If you made it so far into the video, thank you so much for giving me your time. Uh, this is the first video in my 30 Thursdays of Art series. Basically I'll be posting an art video for the next 30 Thursdays. Fingers crossed. This series, in, uh, this series is inspired by Happy D artist 30 Days of Art that she did years ago. I had a lot of fun painting this piece. This is a piece inspired by the protagonist of the YA fantasy novel that I'm currently working on. I have a second channel where I talk about that. Check that out for more details. Let me know what you thought about this painting in the comments below and also tell me what you'd like to see more from this channel. I can't wait to hear your feedback and thank you so much once again. enjoyed this video i really loved the painting this is it and i'm super happy with it i hope you guys liked it too and comment down below what you thought about this entire video and let me know if you would like to see more videos like this by hitting that thumbs up button please share this video with your friends uh, it really helps me out and until i see you next take care bye